Welcome to a short introduction to the University of Utah Department of Neurosurgery and our residency program. Many of you have never visited Salt Lake City or Utah. We jokingly hear from our friends on the East and West Coast that it's one of those square states that you might fly over on the way to San Francisco or Boston. But Salt Lake City is actually a very beautiful city. Utah has a population of about 3 million people, and Salt Lake City proper has about 1 million population, although our concatchment area for patients is much larger, extending up into Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, for a total of about 6 million lives that we cover. Salt Lake City is a beautiful city, and the University of Utah is located in the foothills on the east side of the city. We have a large undergraduate campus that houses about 33,000 students. 25,000 of those are undergraduates. It's a large, sprawling campus, still a reasonable buy for our undergraduate students, and many come from out of state because of the low tuition, and ranks very high on many of the college ranking systems. We've had a very strong research program and rank consistently in the top 25 of research universities. We're very proud of our Dr. Mario Capecchi. Our university health system ranks very high, and in fact, we've been in the top 10 by the Visant ranking system for the past 10 years. Many of the hospital ranking systems consider this to be a very well-run healthcare system, and we are a comprehensive cancer center at the Huntsman Cancer Institute. The University of Utah is a sponsor for 27 residency programs and has five schools and colleges, including medicine, nursing, dentistry, pharmacy, and health. It's a beautiful campus, the medical campus where we work. Our residents rotate at a number of different facilities, including the Huntsman Cancer Institute, the Clinical Neuroscience Center, a brand new rehab center, and the Intermountain Medical Center. Our residents also go over to the Veterans Administration Hospital, which is close within a couple of miles. We have two intraoperative MRI suites, one at the Huntsman Cancer Institute and one at the Clinical Neuroscience Center. We have a beautiful cancer hospital that houses our radio surgery program and a very sophisticated air medicine travel system to allow for transfers from as far away as Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, as well as parts of Nevada, Arizona, and Colorado. But our real strength is the people. We've been able to attract some amazing residents, and many of our attendings have been here on a long-term basis. We have a very collegial program where residents work side by side with the attending staff. We've been able to attract residents from diverse backgrounds and locations. We're very proud of our residents and feel that they are the backbone of our program. One of the highlights of our program is our strong academic support staff. We have a full-time editor, Kristen Krause, who helps with the editing of manuscripts and submission of manuscripts. She is very easy to work with and is instrumental in the proliferative publication record that we have in our department. Vance is involved in media production. Many of the surgeries that are done, he videotapes and edits and turns into wonderful works for publication and for video presentations. He makes the work from the operating room very presentable and is a great resource in our department. Jenny Williams is an illustrator that can help with illustrations needed for our manuscripts. Our coordinators for our program, Amy Eakins, who is our academic program manager, and Tantalisa Waldrum, who manages our fellowships and assists with the residency program, both very approachable and very strong in our program. I've included a list of some of our alumni. We've trained some very strong residents who've gone on to become academic leaders, program chairmen, and leaders in their community for those that have gone into private practice. They've done fellowships in diverse areas and have settled all over the United States. We have strong programs in all aspects of neurological surgery. These include cranial base, spinal, pediatric, functional, neuroendovascular, critical care and trauma, and private practice. Our school-based program is led by our department chair, Dr. William Caldwell. He's assisted by Dr. Richard Schmidt, very experienced surgeon that's been in our program for over 30 years, and two of our endovascular and vascularly trained neurosurgeons, Dr. Towski and Dr. Grandi. 
Our spine program is led by Dr. Andrew Daly. Dr. Erica Bisson is nationally known for her work in outcomes. And Dr. June Chavez was a fellow with us who stayed on to our program. Dr. Edgar Golston is a physiatrist who works in our department to help with spinal injections and non-surgical management of spine disease. Dr. Mahan heads up our peripheral nerve section and also has a very strong surgical practice. And Dr. Marcus Major was one of our residents, but then went away and did a comprehensive adult deformity fellowship and now has rejoined our practice to help Dr. Daly with the spinal deformity practice. In neuro-oncology, we've been lucky to have three neuro-oncologists, Dr. Cohen, Dr. Coleman, and Dr. Mendez. And on the surgery side, I head up the division with the strong presence of Dr. Daniel Foltz, who's another very experienced neurosurgeon that's been with us for over 30 years. Dr. Manacho was one of our residents who went away and did a fellowship at MD Anderson and now is back on faculty, spending part of her time doing neuro-oncology and part of her time doing critical care medicine and trauma. Our pediatric program has been one of our strongest programs for many years. The program is led by Dr. Douglas Brockmeyer, Dr. John Kessel, who has world reputation for the clinical trials that he's run and the network that he's set up for children's hydrocephalus. Dr. Cheshire, who has a very strong lab program, as well as neuro-oncology program, and Dr. Bolo, who has a very strong functional program and performs research in functional neurosurgery and epilepsy. Our trauma and critical care program is a mixture of neurointensivists and neurosurgeons. Dr. Ansari Ledyard are neurologists and ER physicians who have critical care training. Dr. Grandi and Rab, as well as Dr. Minaccio, make up our trauma team. Dr. Minaccio performed a critical care fellowship during her residency and actually heads up the critical care team at this time. We're currently recruiting to find someone else to help with this very busy service. Our neuroendovascular team is led by Dr. Towski. Dr. Grandi is a neurosurgeon with endovascular training, and Dr. Matt Alexander is a neuroradiologist interested in neurovascular. We have recruited Dr. Craig Kilberg, who is going to join this group later this summer. Our functional team is led by Dr. John Ralston. Dr. Craig Rabb, who's also the chief over at the VA, helps with the functional program. And Dr. Paul House, who used to be one of our faculty members, has moved over to the large private system here in Salt Lake City that our residents have an opportunity to rotate with him. He continues to have a busy functional practice. Our faculty have a very diverse research portfolio. And in fact, there's a separate video that you can find on our website that will explain this in more detail. Dr. Kessel is the vice chair for clinical research in our department, and Dr. Ed Dudek is vice chair of basic science research in our department. Dr. Dudek has a large lab that's interested in epilepsy. As I mentioned before, Dr. Kessel is an expert in clinical trial design and the epidemiology in pediatric neurosurgery. Dr. Bisson has also earned a master's in public health and is interested in clinical trial design and epidemiology and spine disease. Dr. Bolo has a research focus on pathogenesis of childhood epilepsy. Dr. Howard Coleman heads up our neuro-oncology team. He has a strong effort in stem cells and treatment response in gliomas. Dr. Cheshire has a very strong research effort in stem cell biology and the growth and development of both pediatric and adult gliomas. Dr. Foltz has had a long interest in medulloblastoma and is an expert in the molecular biology of that disease. Dr. Eric Wang explores hypoxia-driven genetic instability in gliomas and is also interested in the metabolic aspects of glioma development and growth. Dr. Mahan has a laboratory that studies peripheral nerve regeneration. I think that it'll be worthwhile for you to see our video to hear more about some of the work being done in his lab. And finally, my work is in meningioma and glioma preclinical models and tumor hypoxia. We have many research opportunities in the department, and once again, I'll direct you to our website to talk about that more. But we really have been lucky in having very strong collaborations across the whole campus at the University of Utah. 
This has allowed us to allow research in various and diverse avenues for our residents and allow them to participate in projects that they're interested in. Here's some examples of some of the research that has been conducted by our residents. Our residents are very versed at obtaining IRB approval and working in these laboratories on various topics in all fields of neurosurgery. As I mentioned before, we have a very strong academic output and our publications increase each year. We also have a very busy clinical service, and this continues to grow over time with very strong operative caseload and outpatient clinic. What a lot of resident applicants are really interested in is the number of cases that are done. And here I've tried to give a breakdown showing the different categories that we submit cases for to the RRC and to the American Board of Neurological Surgeons. In the second column, you can see the required case numbers. And in the middle column, these are the actual numbers of these particular cases of our graduating residents. On the far right are the total numbers of each of these categories that are available at our training programs. As you can see, our residents graduate with many more cases than are required for their certification. This is true both in the realms of cranial disease as well as in spinal neurosurgery. Our pediatric service is very busy, and I think these numbers reflect the busyness of that service. Our residents are very comfortable with pediatric neurosurgery after they graduate. And in fact, many of them go on to do fellowships in pediatric neurosurgery because of the wonderful experience that they've had at Primary Children's Hospital. One of the great things about living in Utah is the life outside the hospital. In our welcome video, we mentioned some of these, but we have world-class skiing, hiking, and outdoor activities. These are all within close proximity. Our skiing is all within 45 minutes. There's a number of major ski resorts that you can very easily go up and ski in an afternoon or on the weekend. Within three hours, you can be in Zion or in Moab. And within six hours, you can be in Yellowstone, the Grand Tetons, you can visit Lake Powell and other areas in southern Utah. Here are some of the national parks, the Big Five as they're known, which are all very easily accessible within at least three to four hours. We have a wonderful community here where the arts are well represented with the symphony orchestra, the ballet, and our theater. We also have wonderful sports, and the University of Utah is home to the Pac-12 that has been a lot of fun being part of that league. We welcome you to take a good look at our website. There's a number of other resources that you'll find here and hope that this might be something that would spark some interest. Please don't hesitate to contact us. You'll find the information for application and contacting our residency coordinator on the website. Thank you.